This video is going to discuss the differences between laser, camera and RFID, hopefully enabling you to make a more informed choice about the technology to use when reading your codes. Before I start, no doubt you've heard of the law of the instrument, and basically what it says is that if you've got a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. And there is no silver bullet. There is no single reading device that suits all applications. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, and that's what we're going to explore during this presentation. The first thing we need to do is identify what technology you need to carry the data. If you're using a centralised system where your host computer stores all the data, then barcodes or 2D will probably be suitable for you. The analogy here would be like the baggage tag that's used on your luggage when you travel on holiday or your DHL delivery package. However, if you're looking at a decentralised system, this is where the information is written to the tag, and this information can change as it moves through the logistics operation. Some things you need to consider are if the tag is captive, i.e. does it leave the factory or stay within? And if it does leave the factory, how many tags are you going to need to be out with your customers? A critical message here is not to be fooled into thinking that any one technology is better than the other. When correctly applied, they are all as good as each other. You can see an example here, for example, where RFID would be the only solution, where there are many different plants in pots and we want to store information about each individual plant. Clearly, a barcode reader wouldn't work in this environment. So you could summarise by saying that RFID is generally suited to dirty or harsh environments, especially areas where you need to write data to the tag or where you have no line of sight to the code. Vision and camera systems are well suited to applications where you have a poor contrast or a low aspect ratio. And you see in this sample code here, we have a very low aspect ratio and also a very low contrast. Also with vision systems, they have the advantage they can read omnidirectionally, so it doesn't matter what orientation the code is in. You can see this one here is tilted. Whereas the advantage of lasers is they give you a large depth of field and a very wide reading area. So the depth of field is this way, and a long range, and a large reading width. Also, the laser devices tend to be less expensive. Here is a comparison chart where you can look at the three different technologies and the key differences. You need to bear in mind things like the cost, ambient light, the depth of field, the read area, and the environment it's working in. For example, the sensitivity to external light. RFID, of course, doesn't use light, so there is no influence. Using lasers, they have a high immunity to light due to the very high power of light focused in a very small area the small light spot which scans through the code. Whereas imaging devices and matrix readers need quite a large amount of light, especially to achieve a large depth of field or range. So they can be sensitive to ambient light. A laser reader works on the principles of sending a laser beam onto a rotating polygon. As this polygon spins, it sends the beam of light over the bars. And that results in a light and dark pulse of different energies coming back along the same axis onto the rotating polygon, being deflected onto a concave mirror, onto a receiving element. And here you can see the digitized image that is received by one of the reading devices. So all the power of a laser is focused in one very small area, but scanning through the bars. So that means we have a lot of energy over a very small area. A matrix reader works more like the camera that you have on your smartphone. So it has an area full of pixels. And the more pixels, the more sensitive it is. And therefore, the more costly, of course. So you need to cover a certain number of pixels with your barcode. They can be in any orientation. And of course, it can be a 2D or a linear code. You need to have two or three pixels covered by each dot or each bar of the barcode a successful decode. 
The scanner is then set to take multiple images of the code as it travels through its reading area. You can see in the animation here, it takes several readings as the item moves through the reading zone. So several things have to be matched when configuring a matrix camera system. The illumination has to be sufficient to get enough light back from the code, but not too much to swamp it, so it then just looks like a snowstorm. The scan rate, or the frame rate, that means the number of images you take as a product goes through, mustn't be too low, because you need to make sure that you get the image at least once during its reading field, whether it's the beginning or the middle or the end. Best practice is to go for three, one starting here, one at this point, and one before it leaves. If you set the frame rate too high, then the processor will waste a lot of time trying to decode a lot of frames that don't even have a code in, which means the decode time will be too long. Also, as you can see in this sample here, a large barcode wouldn't fit in the field of view. Here is a comparison showing the average price laser reader versus a similar price camera system. So you can see the laser reader will work from approximately 200 millimeters out to 1.6 meters on a 0.5 mil code or 1.2 on a 0.35 mil code. If we overlay the reading area of a similar priced matrix camera, it'll work up to a larger range, but only starting at approximately 700 millimeters. There are tools you can get to make the device work closer, like wide angle lenses and mirrors and so forth. But you'll also notice here the read height is much larger on this laser reading device than it is on the matrix device. The next technology is a line scan camera. And the line scan camera produces a illumination, a strip of illumination, and the reflected information is sent back to a strip of pixels rather than a matrix of pixels. And you can see here we have six to 8,000 pixels, and that covers an area of approximately one meter wide. In this solution, multiple images are taken as the item moves through its reading field. And you can see here it's built up to look just like a normal photograph, even though it's many, many different slices of information taken and added together. And you can see here how it's reading all the different codes. Line scan cameras are the ultimate in camera technology and unfortunately have a price premium. If we compare a line scan camera with a top of the range laser scanner, you can see once again the line scan camera starts at a range of approximately 1.4 meters, whereas the laser scanner can read closer up. They have a similar reading width and the line scan camera can achieve a much larger reading range. But don't forget, the line scan camera can be three or four times the price of a laser reader. Here are a few typical examples of laser readers, where we're reading a barcode on a tote, easily produced, and a low-cost reader. Similarly, this one here, a pre-printed code permanently attached to the tote box. This is more complex, where we need to read the codes on the sides of a palette, and we want to read all of these codes over a large area. And this lends itself much more to a laser technology. The same as when we're using a laser reader between the forks of a forklift truck, or sometimes even mounted in the cab of the forklift truck. And once again, laser readers for omnidirectional, you can see here we're reading bag tags, and here are the laser scanners, some of them looking through in an X from the side, and actually, this grey area here contains an RFID reading system as well. This system here on the lower right is showing a system using laser readers to read five sides of a carton. Though truthfully, nowadays, most people prefer to use a line scan camera for this application. Here are some examples of the matrix camera. You can see on the left, here is the illumination. Another application here is reading three sides of a box. Here are the cameras looking for the codes on either side of the box. And it wouldn't matter what orientation the code is in. So it can read the code in any orientation. And the code could be a data matrix 2D code, 
or it could be a linear code. Here you can see an application for postal sortation where the orientation doesn't matter, it's in presentation mode, so the operator just shows the package to the reading device. One consideration on this application is the amount of power you use to illuminate the code. It has to be low enough so it doesn't irritate the operators. And towards the lower right, this application is showing one of the smaller reading devices reading a 2D code or a linear code, it could be, on a PCB. Here's an RFID application where we need to read tags which are non-visible inside a pallet. So the tags are actually inside each box and taking them through a portal can read all of the tags in one go. And here's another application in the car industry where the tag is on the car itself and as the car is driven around off the powertrain it can still have its identification read. Here are some line scan camera examples. You can see an actual photograph here showing the amount of illumination. So you can imagine this is quite bright. Most companies looking for the best performance and lowest number of no reads choose line scan cameras for reading on sources like this where you're reading barcodes that could easily get damaged. You also have the advantage of telecoding or OCR and 2D and 1D codes. And if one of the 1D codes is badly printed or truncated, that means a lower aspect ratio, then it can still be reliably read. So here's a decision matrix. You could imagine on a circuit board we could have pre-printed labels, we could have 2D codes or 1D codes. And we can see clearly here there's only one solution really. We have to use a matrix reader because we can read the 2D and the 1D whether it's low contrast or good contrast. The line scan camera would be too expensive for this application. For sorting tote boxes, you can see in this application, we could use either the laser or the matrix reader. Most people prefer the laser. It's easier to set up and more forgiving of trigger points. This application we need to read the code on the leading edge of a tote box on a sorter and you can see it's either a carton or a tote and we're reading the code on the front edge and the code could be at the bottom or up towards the top so we need to allow the laser beam to sweep up through the carton as it passes along that means it gives it a quite large depth of field if we're at 45 degrees onto the code then of course the depth of field we need is going to be 1.414 times the height of the carton. So here it's clear that we need a laser reader because we have a good reading width, a larger depth of field, and the price versus performance is the best. For pallet handling, it's a much easier decision too, because we need to read over the full height and width of the pallet. We need something which has a large reading width and reading height. So therefore an oscillating mirror laser device is perfect. For courier and express parcels, it is possible to do it with laser omnis, but the matrix reader wouldn't really give the performance we would need. We'd rely on a line scan camera to give the best performance. For airport bag tags, the industry has used what we call the ALICE for some time. And this is reading lasers, multiple positions, looking across onto the conveyor belt. The matrix reader and the line scan camera wouldn't really be appropriate. You can see here a typical installation. The tyre industry, you notice here the barcode is of a fixed geometry. They always seem to be around the same width and shape using the similar uh, symbologies. And here we can use any technology to read the codes on the tyres. So we could use the line scan camera, a matrix reader or a laser. And in application they all work well. So in summary, here you can see a decision matrix that should help you identify the differences. So for example here is a standard code, a 2D code, omnidirectional codes, this is depicting a depth of field, poor contrast codes where really your only choice is using a matrix camera or a line scan camera, 
poor quiet zones once again where you really need to use a matrix or a line scan camera to read these low aspect ratio missing bars camera systems tend to be better at reading poorly printed codes so there are a few undeniable facts there's no one right technology it all depends on your application and there is no one right reading device but there is a right reader for your business most businesses choose SIC for their auto ident solutions and SIC offer the right tools for the right application so please talk to a vendor with a full toolbox Yo, sound the bell, school is in, sucker.